Welcome, this is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 5th of May, 2022. Thank you for being here. Topics I've got on the agenda, news, June LTS baseline selection, crowd and enterprise. And on crowd and enterprise, Alex, I wanted to ask you about UTF-8 encoding and what you've learned, if you're willing to um, uh, alternatives etc options etc are you okay if we have that topic on the agenda even if it's only to say i don't know yeah can edit for sure great thank you and then preparing for the meetup for the 12th any other topics we should put on our oh oh actually should we put on maybe we should put on our list um she code africa contributathon contribution contributathon um Updates, the screenshot update progress. Any other things? Okay, all right, well, let's go ahead then. So in terms of news, ah, fat fingers. In terms of news, we're, we've just delivered 2.332.3. Darren Pope and I will do a, a live stream today talking about what's new in it, relatively minor things, one interesting bug fix. And uh, we're prepping for the June LTS baseline. It's looking much better. Thanks so much for your help, Alex. Um, and the there is there are pending changes from Adrian Le Charpentier for a for a uh, what was it a feedback uh, update on scheduled but not running jobs, and it looks like it'll be arrive in next week's weekly, and I hope next week's weekly will be the one chosen. Alex, anything you want to offer there or on any other insights? To the icon thing? Or what do you mean? Just in general to the June LTS baseline. Yeah, I think a couple of weeks ago, we released a version which contained quite a lot of regression fixes. Yeah, and introduced um, and worked down the UX regression dashboard even further within the past weekly releases. And the next one, Adrian took care of, I think, as we merged a couple of hours ago, and we'll land in the next weekly next week. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Nice. Thanks very, very much. And on the She Code Africa Contributhon, the screenshot, up, screenshot update project, we've got two women from Africa, two project members who are, that are contributing updated screenshots. And what they're doing is they're using the most recent weekly for the screenshots on the assumption that those are the, those are much more, much closer to what June will look like than if they were to use the previous LTS. So uh, it looks very good actually. Um, you can see the pull requests and you can see the results arriving in, uh, in a few pages on Jenkins.io. Let's see, so I think we've talked, we may have already talked enough about the baseline selection. Anything else that we need to talk to there? Good, then on to the next topic, crowd in enterprise. So Alex, tell us the story of UTF-8 encoding and, and that way we can get some in, insights from you and others. Yeah, just to pick up the topic from last week, I think a couple of hours later when we submitted the PR, we had the issue that um, brackets and things were actually escaped when they shouldn't be escaped. If you remember correct, if I remember correctly. Mm, right. That, that has actually been resolved by adding a your config option to the cloud and YML in the project itself. So that is indeed configurable, just enabled by default on crowd inside. Oh, good. Okay, so that 
configured to not do that and uh we're we're good to go yeah i've added uh, these options to the current yml to the design library plugin and yeah after that it didn't do that ever again cool i don't know if, the, if this is the right moment to discuss that but i have experienced uh some kind of bug with crowding mm. Uh, sometimes when there is a jelly in some code tags, uh, jelly is transformed into space, Ellie, for whatever reason. <laughs> oh, dear. You mean like you have L space colon and then the tag or? Instead of uh, colon jelly, it's colon space Ellie. Hmm. Is that cost if you... Do the translation by hand or work with the machine translation with the suggestions below the actual box where you can input something. Yes, you're right. Of course, I have to translate it by myself afterwards. Most of the time, there is a translation proposed that is not far from the truth. So I start from that. But for whatever reason, the proposed translation, when it, there is a column jelly, it's transforming to column space Ellie. But yes, you're right. It's not once I've done it by myself. If I were to write it by myself, the error wouldn't be there. You're totally right about that. Yeah, the suggestions are actually generate are actually computer generated because these are machine translations. We don't have much input on them. They are generated on the way Crowdin interprets our files. At the moment, we have only design library and one of Mark's plugins available to feed machine translation with, hence it isn't much smart yet. Okay, that's fine. Okay, but, but so that lobbies that one of the benefits then, or one of the needs here is we need to add more plugins to the pool of plugins. I wanted that for the, the webinar anyway. So are you okay, Alex, if I attempt to add um, other plugins like TestNG or Elastic Access or a few others, and I'll try to do it on my own and then see if, see if I can be successful without having you to guide me. If I fail, okay, we will have learned something. Would that be okay or? Yeah, we can do that for sure. Okay, so several of his, of the plugins he maintains, several. Great, all right. Okay, um, by the way, should I go on with the translation? Should I try to finish the first plugin translation? Yeah, because that would I be try awesome. to do it every day. Okay, we'll do my best. I think I've seen someone who finished the Chinese translation a couple of days ago. At least I got a mail that every string has been translated. Wow. Oh, that's great. So one of the, so a Chinese translation. Excellent. Okay. Well, so, and that leads to the, to the question that leads in, we can get to the UTF-8 question with Chinese translations. And so, so, Back to the brackets were escaped unexpectedly. Is that resolved as far as you can tell then, Alex? It's it's all done? Yes, that is resolved. Now, do I for need an example, to copy? Oh, go ahead. For, for an example, how to resolve that, just take a look at the crowd and YML of the design library. It's basically just one option you can add where you can escape these kinds of spe special characters, or at least tell crowd to not escape them. That is the right way. Good. Okay. So I just copy that to the schedule build plugin YAML file and, and it will, it will then do the same. Yes. Excellent. Okay, good. Any other, any other things from last week before we go on to the UTF-8 topic? Not from my side. Okay. All right. So then the next question led into by the Chinese translation. So a Chinese translation was completed for design library plugin and what what we saw apparently was it the property files must be UT must be ISO 88591 or some such thing yeah Alex tell uh, me some more background on it the current state is if you translate at least someone has uh, approved a couple of strings in the Chinese translation on Crowden which led the action to generate a PR as intended and as shown on GitHub, Chinese simplified was actually there. Like you could read it if you are a Chinese speaker, but if 
I mean, I approved the PR and pulled it in. And once released, I checked again with the locale plugin that these strings are not properly encoded for the client. Like it just has shown some gibberish that is far from Chinese. Yeah, and then Tim reminded me that these files actually need to be encoded, but encoded in a way that I don't have the actual issue in my mind at the moment, but at least in a way that um, to make sure the Chinese stays Chinese and not gets become some gibberish. Okay. I think uh, the underlying issue, or not issue, but the underlying way how it is done is that stapler first loads it in the wrong thing and then stops at it because Basil left a comment that Java 9 and ongoing, which will become the next um, Java version in September for Jenkins, will have a way to force you to have eight first. So it does some sort of it. So my understanding, I thought I'd heard that it loads in ISO 8859-1 or some other rather mature standard, and and then somehow transforms that into into UTF-8. Yeah, I just took a look at Basil's response. The current stapler code could be transformed into a property resource bundle, which as of Java 9 plus, which we will begin requiring in September, first loads property files in UTF-8, falling back to ISO 8859 otherwise. But this behavior is specific to Java 9 onwards and doesn't exist on Java 8 at the moment. Hence it does what it does. Right, okay. So is there any potential? So it, I mean, we've seen good results with Western European languages, German, Italian, French. So I'm assuming that single byte locales, ISO 88591 are okay, but if you wanna do Russian or Korean or Chinese or Japanese, we, do we need an extra step? What, what we need something that would convert that UTF-8 that Crowdin creates into whatever the magic encoding is that Jenkins would accept? Yeah, I've taken a look over the Crowdin documentation, but I at least couldn't find a case where you can configure it. But I've contacted Crowdin, I think a couple of days ago, how they would go about it. Because for the time being, we can't properly rely on the um, exported translations from Crowdin because they are not accurate because of that. A way to go around would be to transform the exported strings manually into UTF-8, but that would require to edit the PR again. That was kind of my next question. A long time ago, when I had a lot of trouble with non-UTF-8 um, yeah, non and uh, Java property files, I had to encode each of my property files which were used for translation uh, thanks to escape, you know, it was a backslash U and then uh, UTF, uh, whatever code. It was pretty straightforward, but it was a pain in the neck to do. Uh, would that make sense uh, why we are not using Java 9 or not? Or is it even possible to add a step to the workflow? Uh, I think you can, I mean, I think you could write a bash script and let GitHub Actions do that if you're at it or at least have a bash script with a few lines that basically transforms these files for the time being, if crowd, but I think Crowden will get back to me anytime soon, at least I hope. Okay. So we can work out a solution. However, that will likely be only something for the next three, four, or maybe five months until Jenkins requires Java 11. Mm -hmm. Because then we can have, because then we have the chance to change the method in Stapler itself and use the code edit in Java 9. Yeah, so so for me, there's a there's a if if Crowdin has a specific solution for us, great. That's that's the ideal. If they don't, short term, this script to do a, a transformation or a GitHub action to do the transformation doesn't sound too bad. And then long term, once we really require Java 11 then we, we can update stapler. It's really, it's not that we can use UTF-8 properties, right? We can update stapler to use the new 
new property facility with UTA, UTF-8 properties, right? Yeah, I mean, to keep it even simpler, it doesn't need to be a basket at all. There are countless tools on the internet you can use to do that. So it's basically shouldn't require any bash knowledge at all. Oh, oh, okay. Now you're making me remember the, the GNU days. There was a tool called Recode, right? Where that was would do a character set transformation. Interesting. Okay, right. So yeah, the tool several... I used to use was called native to ASCII. Yeah, yeah, yeah there are several there you tools go. you can use to do that. Okay. GNU recode, or you say native to ASCII. Yeah. That, and, and as I far as- I link into the chat. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Excellent, okay. Yeah, worth to note that this only affects properties files, Jelly, and maybe less I use Groovy are unaffected by that. Oh, oh, right, right. Okay, good point. All right, so it is Jelly and HTML uh, help files are unaffected. They can be use UTF-8 right now. Uh, it's Java property files. I'm not sure how often Java files are actually used for tons of localization. I only have a few plugins, which only have a few strings in Java localization. So I don't think it will be such a major backstop for now. Good point, because at least for the plugins I maintain, most of the UI components are in fact Jelly or HTML, right? They're not, they're not actually, I'm not certainly not generating HTML in, in most of the, most of the, the plugin source code, the Java code. Okay, right. Yeah, Jelly is, I guess, the recommended way nowadays to do views instead of right. Groovy or Java. Yeah. So, actually, yeah. So it's Jelly, Groovy, and HTML files are unaffected. All of them are already using it. Good. Okay. Excellent. So, Alex, it, it looks like we've got. So one is we wait and hope that Crowdin will tell us, hey, here's this way you handle it and, and it all works easily. If that doesn't work, we look at native to ASCII, not record, recode, or other solutions that could do a similar transformation. Because what, what Crowdin is providing is valid UTF-8. As far as you yeah. can tell and as far as we've seen, it's valid UTF-8. And, and Bruno, the tools you mentioned take valid UTF-8 and convert it to ASCII, which is a valid subset of ISO 8859-1, so should be, should be fine. Okay, good. That's encouraging. All right. Anything else on, on the UTF-8 topic then, Alex or Bruno? Not from my, Not side. From my side. I think we okay. have mentioned everything with possible ways how to go about it. Excellent. All right. So next topic on my list was, was to prep for the online meetup, talk about an agenda, how you would like to talk about it, et cetera, Alex, what would, what would you like to do? What would uh, you like me think, to do? And what? Bruno? Uh, yeah, I think a great way would be to actually show how to use it from a translator aspect, from a project maintainer aspect, and from a proofreader aspect. So we actually cover all states how to translate something, how to approve something, and how to review something. I think that is a major aspect that plugin maintainers will going to use. I wouldn't want to spend much time on how to set up a project because if we are going the GitHub Actions way, the setup is pretty much copy paste from the workflow example we have provided, uh, we have worked with the past couple of weeks. Yes, and the other day you saw that you were working or thinking of a template that you could use directly within GitHub. Yeah. Or did I daydream that? Okay, <laughs> fine. Yeah, I didn't have the time to propose a PR to the .github repository yet, but I think that's something I will do within the next week or something. However, I uh, I think I've written down a, a proposal for Jenkins IO again, how to 
set up a project because the, pro, uh, the, uh, the setup is pretty much straightforward how to do that. It may be easier to read it afterwards, the online meetup again. Okay, However, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, one question from my side, how do we want to let people access, um, how do we want to let people create the project? At the time being, only project maintainers can create these projects like we have done in the past sessions. If you remember the workspace thing, you click the plus button, but that is only something instance maintainers or administrators can do. My idea was like to possibly go through the infrastructure help desk. So like people raise an issue on the help desk labeled as crowdin.jenkins.io say, hey, this is my plugin. Please create me a project on crowdin.jenkins.io and possibly me or someone else who would like to take care of that would do that and say, hey, here's your project. And then they can go ahead and copy and paste the GitHub workflow. Considering this is a pretty simple task to do, this is, it doesn't require any specific knowledge. I'm wondering if we can do this through, through the help desk, but not necessarily assigning help desk uh, infrastructure members to it because these are not tasks that have to be done by any infrastructure member, I guess. <laughs> Well, I think I think they I think they are likely willing to help us if we're willing to make them administrators. And then I like your idea of using the help desk, just so. A, so what what you're saying is basically a main an administrator of the cloud in the crowd in instance then creates it, and that that right now is just you and me, if I understand correctly. And we would need to make them anybody we want to help with these help desk tickets we would we would need to make them able to administer crowd in is that yeah did i understand correctly yeah tim logged in a couple of weeks ago i've given him administrator rights any as well oh good okay but but yeah for the time being only we three have actual administrative access over the instance and i think that is also needed to create new projects but once we have created these projects and people have logged in once and we have assigned them to the project, they can basically manage the entire project themselves as intended, okay. I guess. Now, so that's how do we grant access to create a project? That sounds pretty easy. Do we already have, have an idea of how they will log in? So right now, is it it's just using GitHub authentication? Is that correct? Yeah, I have disabled okay, everything good. else. I think I left GitHub and Google enabled and the typical password email if you want, because SSO wasn't much feasible here. But I think GitHub, Google, and typical email password is what the majority of people will use anyway. Oh, good. Okay. So the answer to how do they authenticate is it's either GitHub or Google. Uh, or maybe I should say it differently. Both GitHub and Google are supported. Yeah. And are already enabled. Yeah. So we require we certainly require a GitHub account for in order to be a Jenkins plugin maintainer. So that that seems like we're done there. Great. Okay. Yeah. So the workflow would basically be to recap it. Someone opens an issue on help desk, someone of us or the infrastructure team members, if they would like to take care of that, because I wouldn't want to add a potential maintenance burden on them if not needed. Mm -hmm. would create the project, assign these to the team on Crowden and say, hey, your project has been created. We can go ahead and add the action now. That makes sense. So triage, so help desk triage assigns the ticket to, to one of the uh, Crowden maintainers or Crowden admins. And that could be, today that's three of us. And if, if you're comfortable, we could add others, but that's the three of us for now. Yeah, and then, I mean, then go ahead. For the time being, I don't mind helping out in creating new projects, but sooner or later, I guess more people will likely step up if they're more familiar with managing crowd in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't see an issue there. Great. That's that's excellent. All right. So this one, the grant access to create a project. Do we need to, I assume we would want to demonstrate that during the online meetup as well. So, okay, we talk, and I guess that's part of the plugin maintainer 
how to use. Yeah, how to at least how to how you create a project should be shown at least once that to make sure that infrastructure members or someone else is actually aware how to do that and how right. to do it properly. But I guess yeah, we can go over that as well. Excellent. All right. So in terms of who who shows which things, is this something we would have you be the primary voice and the rest of us just make comments, or would you like to assign this around to other people? What what's best for you? Uh, I could go ahead and uh, do the do a little instruction. Say what is crowd and how do we plan to use it? What you can use it actually for? What kind of languages like Java, Jelly, Groovy, and so on? And show how you can set up the project and integrate it with GitHub Actions. Yeah, and maybe I think Bruno has started to translate a plugin in French. Maybe he could show us how he translate a few or a couple of strings. Yeah, which someone I will then be the terrible <laughs> French speaker. <laughs> wow, what was that? That was very good, French. Bruno. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which then, which then someone of us approves. Yeah, and then I could basically run the action on GitHub and considering the design library, for example, is integrated with continuous delivery, I could basically go ahead and merge this PR straight away to have it available, release, I think within the next half an hour or something. And boom. Yeah, we, we might actually get the release within the time, the duration of the online meetup. So that, that would be, for me, that would be a great thing to come back as the meetup is ending saying, oh, here's the new release of the design library plugin. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, how is the meetup organized? I mean, are people just in the audience able to participate, ask questions, or can we hear them or just chat and maybe questions? Good, good question. So, so what happens is we do it as a Zoom webinar. And as a Zoom okay. webinar, that means the panelists have full screen sharing and speak speaking ability. But the participants can only ask questions through the Q&A facility. So During this, cool. I'll act as moderator and I'll monitor the Q&A and okay, be but... the voice to raise questions saying, Oh, Alex, I think I should ask you this question here. Or, oh, I okay. should ask you this question at that point. That was my main question. I wanted to know who will be the moderator. You yeah, so, moderator. so usually at least I moderate. We may nominate Kevin as well to assist with moderation because moderation is a, is a, a skill that is good to develop. We're going to need it in the future. Yeah, I think that is the setup we use for Uli's online meetup in January. And I think that worked quite well. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, that one was a good example The the Uli did mo the bulk of the presentation. If there were, if I felt like asking questions and disrupting, I would sometimes do that. And, and I hope that the questions were helpful. All right. So then create a project in crowd in. So you will approve the translation as a proofreader, then creating a project in crowd in Alex, you'll show that as well. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And then I assume we've got questions and question and answer. Answer from the audience, questions, questions from the audience. Now, and I, I'm also assuming if we need to talk about alternatives for UTF-8 uh, locales for UTF-8, what, what should, it's tough to say this. Should I say multi-byte strings? No, UTF-8 is probably for full UTF-8 full UTF support. Yeah. And that will depend on whatever you learn between now and May 12th. Yeah, I will try. If I don't get a fitting or for us fitting response from Crowdin, I will try to maybe find a tool online that people can use with ease, especially something that shouldn't require knowledge about GitHub Actions or how to do that manually. Mm -hmm. Likely, if you know how to write, how to do that, and you and you with a bash script, you would likely do that and go straight ahead. But for others, an online tool will do basically the same. Well, and thinking about it, I think we've got tools like this that perform, at least perform checks because we've got a spell checker that runs on Jenkins.io as a GitHub action. 
And, and what it does is uses a Docker image, that, a Docker container image that has a spell checker inside of it. And so it must be feasible. I guess at, at minimum, we could do a safety check that the pull request doesn't include UTF-8 encoding inside the property files before, well, yeah, okay. There, there are alternatives, good, all right. Excellent. Any other topics that need to be on the list? Okay, well, I think, I feel like we're ready for an online meetup. Okay, ready. We've got a, at least an agenda and a plan for May 12th. Alex, if you can be there, say 15 minutes early so that we can do um, technical checks to be sure, yes, your web, everything is working right. We know how to screen share, stop screen share, yada, yada, the usual things. Bruno, likewise? Yep. Yep. Great. All right. Okay. Do we have any other topics for today's meeting? Zenob, I see that you're there and we haven't we haven't pulled you into any of this conversation because we've been so focused on localization. Were there any topics you needed to discuss? Um, no, nothing for me. Okay, well, so we, we did, before you joined, we had noted that we were making great progress in on SheCode Africa. Screenshot yeah. update and inclusive naming are both doing very good things. And we've seen good progress there. Uh, pull requests are arriving. Had another session with pipeline help today and uh, making progress. Great. All right. Any other topics for today then? Um, and how about the project management? How is she doing? Oh, brilliant. She's been she's been the best of all of the all of the experiences. Thank you very much for doing that. She's been absolutely wonderful sends the reminders, helps me keep on track, worries about, are you updating your document? Are you keeping these things current? Oh, we, we must do that again next year. Nice, <laughs> all right, thank you. Sorry, I, I forget to mention how valuable that is because it's just, uh, she's doing wonderfully. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, no other topics then? None for me. Okay, let's call call an end for today. I'll stop the recording. Thanks everybody.